A new study out this week takes a, a good look at upward mobility in this country, and it finds where you grow up can significantly help or hurt how far you rise economically as an adult. The statistics show that it's a slow climb in cities like Atlanta, Charlotte, Memphis, Indianapolis, Cincinnati, and Columbus, but a faster climb in cities like New York, Boston, Pittsburgh, Salt Lake City, Seattle, and large chunks of California as well. Joining me live now to talk about it, one of the co-authors of the study, Nathaniel Hendren, who is an assistant professor of economics at Harvard University. Dr. Hendren, good to see you. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me, Craig. What are the characteristics of, of places that seem to have greater upward mobility? That's a great question. So when we started, we were really taking a look at uh, the role of tax policies like the earned income tax credit. And when you look across uh, the United States, you do see some relationships uh, between areas that have uh, different measures of, uh, of tax, uh, tax expenditures, like higher property tax rates and greater amounts of uh, the earned income, income tax credit. But really, we found four factors were the strongest correlates uh, with uh, upward mobility. And, and those four factors were the quality of the K-12 education system, the degree of income uh, inequality and segregation, the strength of social ties and the amount of uh, civic engagement, huh. and then finally the uh, uh, strength of the family structure, so uh, various measures of uh, the strength of the family. Good schools, strong families, mm -hmm. full households seem to be the, the, the strongest correlators. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So uh, give you an example the way we measure the family structure. So in areas where there's a higher fraction of, of people born to single mothers, there's lower rates of, of upward mobility. And you know, one thing to, to mention on that is that that holds true not only for people born to single mothers, that ho also holds true for people born to married parents as well. And so really, it's really about what you said. It's, it seems to be characteristics of places uh, rather than characteristics of people that is determining these, the extent of upward mobility across these areas. But, but how much does this have to do with the fact that on average, people who live in some parts of the country, like New York, for instance, tend to earn more uh, than others starting off the bat than, than folks who would you know, start in the Midwest or even the South? That's a great question. So we took a look at the relationship between upward mobility and the average income in an area. And what might surprise people is that that's actually not uh, not very strongly related at all. Hmm. Um, it's really it's more about uh, the allocation of income within an area, so the extent of income inequality and the degree of segregation of, of people, say, uh, the poor population from the, the middle class. Two cities where upward mobility is substantially lower, according to the report, Atlanta and Memphis, Atlanta, the New York of the South. Both of those cities mm -hmm. have high African-American populations. How, how does race factor into your findings? Yeah, great question. So it is true that areas that have a higher fraction of African Americans have lower rates of upward mobility. But what's important to note is that this holds true just when you look at the, the white population as well. So whites have lower rates of upward mobility in cities like Atlanta and Charlotte, and higher rates of upward mobility in areas like San Francisco. And so really, it, it, seems, it suggests to us that this is really about differences in places, not so much differences in races. Huh. Last question before I get, let you get out of here, because we like to talk about solutions here uh, mm -hmm. as well. What can we do uh, as a society? What can we do collectively? What can government do, if anything, mm -hmm. to improve mobility in America? Well, I think that's the, the really important question. And just to be perfectly honest, I don't think we have all the answers here. I think that's really what we're hoping to explore over the coming years with our research. But, you know, the, some of the factors like the quality of the K-12 through education system, we know from our study and from other studies that that actually does play a strong role in improving the lives of, of kids and increasing their earnings later in life. And so, you know, equal access to quality education is something that I think we can say with, 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 uh, with, uh, with, with strong certainty that that's a, playing a good role. But I think that doesn't explain all the variation across areas. And I think it's really important to learn uh, learn from these differences about what can be done. Nathaniel Hendren, a big thanks to you. Appreciate you coming thanks. on to break that down for us.